the past couple of months, I've been reading every era of Disney animation in preparation for their 60th animated film and Kanto releasing this November. And today, I'm going to rank every film of the Bronze Age from the worst to the best. Now, keep in mind, I don't have any strong negative feelings towards any film on this list, so just because a movie is lower on the list doesn't mean I hate it. It just means I think the other movies higher up on the list are better. And this was a hard list to make, because apart from a couple of these films, none of them really feel Disney. Most of them feel really generic. And that's not to say they're not good on their own, they just don't feel like Disney's strongest material. Most of these films I'm pretty indifferent on, except for like the last couple that are higher up on the list. So just keep that in mind. Most of these movies, my reactions to them are just kind of, eh, that was all right. So coming in at last place at number eight is The Aristocats. I do love the character of Thomas O'Malley, and I think the music in it is great, but that's about it. The plot just feels almost the same as 101 Dalmatians, which was released just nine years prior to this, where a bunch of baby animals are kidnapped by the villain, and they go on this journey to go home. And on top of that, the animation is not that aesthetically pleasing. It looks like we're watching a film reel that got scratched, and we can see the scratches on the characters in the animation, which is really distracting. Number seven, The Fox and the Hound. This movie's cute. As far as Disney movies go, it's not the most interesting plot. The movie's just kind of fine to have on in the background, but it's not really a movie I'm going to choose to sit down and watch if I don't have to. Number six, Oliver and Company. And this is definitely a strange direction for Disney to go. Let's take Oliver Twist, set it in 1980s New York, and make some of the characters animals and some of them humans. I think the music in this movie is pretty good, but it's definitely not Disney's strongest especially because this was released on the exact same day as The Land Before Time, which is a much better movie. So this feels like the backup choice if you went to go see Land Before Time, but it was sold out. Number five, The Rescuers. Yeah, this movie's all right. Nothing about this movie is particularly great, but nothing about it is particularly awful. The villain, all right. Story, it's all right. The animation, it's all right. It's watchable, but it's nothing special. Number four, The Black Cauldron. I know a lot of people are going to be mad that this isn't in last place, because this is considered by many to be one of the worst Disney movies ever. And while I'm not a huge fan of this film either, I wouldn't go that far. Remember, we live in a world where Chicken Little exists. It does have a lot of problems, though. The plot's pretty stupid because it involves, like, this magic cauldron, and the villain wants the main character's pig because the pig is psychic and can see where the cauldron is, and he wants the cauldron so he can rule the world, and then there's... These witches that, like, I don't know, just the plot is just kind of silly and it's kind of incoherent. It's like watching somebody do a game of Dungeons and Dragons and they just kind of make it up as they go along. There doesn't really feel like there's any one direction for it. And none of the heroes are particularly memorable. And the character of Gurgi is annoying. And I've gone on record before saying that I think he's one of the worst characters Disney ever created. Up there with Olaf, Vanellope, and Sisu from The Last Dragon. But John Hurt as the villain is really scary, and this does have a lot of scary imagery for a Disney movie, which makes up for it just a bit. It's not the strongest plot, and it doesn't have the best characters, but dang, there is some very daring and scary imagery. Like, good for you for going all the way with the scare factor on this one, Disney. Number three, Winnie the Pooh. If you don't like this movie, you're dead inside. I don't see how anyone could possibly hate this movie. It's adorable, it's got memorable characters, and really fun songs. And it just keeps it simple. It doesn't feel the need to go overly big like a lot of Disney movies did previously. It just keeps it simple and tells a simple, cute story. Number two, The Great Mouse Detective. Vincent Price is the villain. Fun story. It's a unique idea. It's kind of fun. Let's take the story of Sherlock Holmes. And it's not technically Sherlock Holmes, but it is. Let's make Sherlock Holmes a mouse. Pretty good. It's got an interesting idea. Obviously, Vincent Price absolutely steals the show with his big animated gestures Fantastic villain song. I mean, come on. Like, Great Mouse Detective. It, it's good. Number one at first place is Robin Hood. This has great characters. It's a fun movie. It's an all-around good time. The songs are absolutely toe-tapping. And yeah, the animation probably isn't the best. Like I said, there's some of that scratch factor, but it's not as noticeable as the Aristocats. And honestly, I think this is probably the most fun and the most entertaining out of all of the movies on this list, which honestly isn't saying much. But... It still comes in at number one. So go ahead and share your ranking of the Disney Bronze Age, and I will see you in just a couple weeks for my Disney Renaissance ranking.